What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon and today we've got a fun MIG welding project. I need a place to store my welders and I want to stack them up near my welding and fabrication table. Now this could work pretty much anywhere. It's not specific to my needs here. You guys could build this for your workshop, especially if you're cramped for space like I am and you're trying to maximize everything you got. This video is going to be fairly long. It's packed with tons of welder setup and fabrication and welding information so be sure to like comment and subscribe because I upload new videos every week we're gonna build this stick around so this is what I'm looking to do guys I have a couple welders that I use pretty regularly and what I want to do is I want to have those close by to my welding table so I'm not wheeling them out on a cart pretty much I want to leave them set up so that they're all ready to go all the time what I'm gonna do is rather than weld on this table I'm actually gonna take some square tube and we're gonna weld a flange on it so we can bolt it to this do the same thing here then that'll make like a receptacle then we're gonna have some square tube that comes up and then it's gonna go in with a little hook going up so the machine can set on it so here is the front edge of that table these are the little pieces of square tube we're going to use. Then we're going to come up, and then we're going to come in, and then up a little bit in the welders. I'm going to fit two welders on top of these. The welders will span over both of these little areas here. And this is what it's going to look like, and I want to be able to put a welder here and another welder here. It'll help maximize space and keep them all set up right where I use most of my welders most of the time. Having a welding car is nice, but I just don't want to have to pull it out all the time because I'm always working in the same place. So I might as well have my welders set up where I use them the most, and that's at my table. I got a bunch of spare one inch square tube left over from a railing project that I did. And I got some one and a quarter square tube up here, which would be one inch inside that that can fit into. And I got some miscellaneous flat bar. So not even five minutes into it guys, and I've already got a change of plans. So remember I said I was gonna bolt this square tube onto this? I'm actually not. I'm gonna weld it right solid, uh, this little receiver piece. And the reason for that is you see where the welder's feet are, right here and here? This orange piece is a removable plate. Well, I don't want to interfere with that. So I want my vertical pieces to be right about here and right about here. If I end up putting a flat plate in behind that so I can bolt it, it's going to put it out too far. So I won't be able to grab these areas. So I'm actually going to weld the receiver right onto this. No reason why I shouldn't be able to, and it'll be just fine. This measures two inches in height, which is 50 millimeters. So now I'm just going to cut up some inch and a quarter square tube, which works out to be 31 millimeters. I need to cut this into two two inch lengths. Now, if you guys are wondering about any of the tools that you see me using in these videos, including, you know, this marker or whatever, I'll have links down in the video description. And with those, some of them you'll actually get a little bit of money off and get a discount. And the channel gets a little bump as well. You can see guys how good this does for a cut. Super square, super precise, requires very little cleanup. Unlike a, an abrasive blade where they get really hot, this just does a real nice job. You get a little scraggler here and there and just touch it up with a flap disc and you're good to go. Now I also need to ensure that these receptacles are outside of the feet and that they're not going to interfere with the door when I open it up to change reels. So I don't want any issues when I go to do that. So this should work good. I'm going to put each one, one right here and another one right here. Now we just got to clean the metal up on each side of that. And it actually has some stiffeners in behind this, a bunch of extra reinforcing metal. So that'll work nice. You can see that right there. And you can see more of it right there. I'm just going to take my Sharpie and make a little mark there. Because I don't want to go too far into this uh, baked enamel finish. I don't want to go 
screwing it up too bad. So I only want to really remove that what I need to remove at a bare minimum. So when I go back through and touch it all up, it doesn't look that bad. All right, now we're ready to start welding, guys. And for this, I'm going to be using my Yes Welder MIG 205 DS. Now, the one thing I like about this machine, and it's good for beginners, uh, people who are just starting out to weld, and it's also good for people who are experienced that just have a lot on their mind and they don't have a great memory. This is what's called a synergic machine. You just set a couple parameters, and the machine will do everything for you based on those parameters that you set, and then you can just adjust and fine-tune it a little bit up or down from there. So... Let me show you how this works. I'm using 30 thousandths uh, solid wire. So I'm using C25 gas. Google is your friend, guys. Uh, this is material thickness, and it's going to be set in millimeters. So we're using 12 gauge. 12 gauge converts out to be 2.6 millimeters. So we'll toggle it over. That's thickness. We're going to go to 2.6, which is equivalent to 12 gauge is that right there okay so we got the thickness set and now we're going to set this is 2t or 4t this is just how we pull the trigger 2t is just the standard mode pull the trigger wire comes out let off the wire stops now we're going to set our gas so mig co2 that's if you're using uh just straight co2 gas we're not so we're going to be setting it on mag right there but we could also with this welder do stick welding we could do lift tig or we could do flux core or cell shielded wire but we're not we're doing c25 gas so we're going to set that on mag now we just set our wire thickness we could do 23 thousandths but like i said we have 30 thousandths and you can also set it for 35. so you set your wire for 30 thousandths and that's it we've done it all this is set for 123 amps, 19.1 volts. That's all there is to setting it, guys. And if you wanted to adjust it a little bit up or down, you needed a little more heat, you can just turn this dial clockwise from there or counterclockwise from there to go up and down and change it how you like. So that's that. Pretty slick, huh? And then the gas, what that does is, is that purges your gas solenoid. And it's a good thing I checked, guys, because my polarity is wrong. Anytime you're welding with gas, it's always electrode positive, and your earth or your working lead goes to negative. Like I said, we're using C25 gas. We're going to turn it on real slow to non-flammable gases. You seal them by opening it all the way. I just hit the purge, and you can see that there's no gas pressure, so we're going to set it to about 17. And just like that, guys, we are ready to weld. I'm just going to put on my square onto this metal so that everything is going to fit well. And we'll just get a couple tacks on it. Well, guys, we all make mistakes, and it's okay. I was trying to figure out why isn't this welding right? What's going on? GS, gas shielded. I thought I was using solid wire. This is actually flux core or self-shielded, and as we just talked about, to do this right, self-shielded wire or flux core wire would be DC electrode negative. These would be flipped around. That's why I was having a problem. So that just goes to show you guys that anybody can make a mistake and it's easy to do. Rather than switch machines back and forth, matter of fact, I just set up my Fronius machine with solid wire, but I don't like switching back and forth to different uh, different wires and then unspooling from one and putting on another. I just picked up another reel. So this is Lincoln Super Arc L56, and uh, the reason I buy Lincoln is I'll have a video up above that I'll link. Uh, we did a shootout on all different wires, and uh, this came out on top. This was uh, some good wire. And because we're using solid wire, we got to switch out the drive rolls. We got to go from the serrated drive rolls over to the solid tooth drive rolls. And as you can see right here, it says it's 30 thousandths or 0.8 millimeter. So that means we need to use the 0.8 millimeter die that comes with this as opposed to the 0.9, which would be 35 thousandths. So make sure the 0.8 is to the inside. Now I get asked a lot in the comment section about setting up the wire and how it's difficult to set up. Well, the first thing you got to do is figure out which way 
this is fed onto the reel. So you can see here the wire would be coming off the top of the reel right here. Well, if you look down at the machine, you can see that we need the wire to come off the bottom of the reel, not the top. So one of the first things that I need to do is you can see that if I make this wire come off the bottom of the reel, I got to rotate it around. So now it's coming off the bottom of the reel, but the problem is, is that I can't get to the wire because it's on the back side once I put it on. So the first thing I want to do, swap the wire sides out. So keep this tension still. Even if you got to pull it back a little bit, find a hole. There we go, right here. I can stick it through this little hole right here. There, just like that. Now I can get to it on the outside when the reel is on. Snip it with your MIG pliers and now you can see how this is feeding off the bottom of the reel and I can still grab the wire. So now I can put this on like this. You want very little tension on this. I'm not going to go too in depth about this guys because I have other videos on how to set up uh, your MIG welder but you don't want this to keep spinning. Now that we've got this on here and tightened now carefully grab your wire, get rid of this right here, snip that off, that. Now using your right hand and spinning this reel, keep, keep this tensioned so that you don't have a bunch of excess slack wire. Now I'm just going to feed this down inside the liner. Now that I've got it fed I can close this down. There, that's good. So that I don't have any issues, I'm going to take off the nozzle. I'm going to remove the contact tip. Get that out of the way. And on the front of the unit, I'm going to press the wire jog button and hold it. And you'll see how the wire goes faster and faster and faster. Now, be sure to check out my video on how to set up the tension on this. How to set up your drive reel tension. It's the five most common problems when setting up a MIG welder and I'll have a link to that above. Reinstall your contact tip, reinstall your nozzle. And now that it's all assembled what I like to do is just dip the end of it in some nozzle gel and what that'll do is that'll keep the insides of this all clean. It's not so much of an issue when you're using solid wire but if you're using cell shielded flux core it tends to build up spatter inside this nozzle. I just do it regardless either way just because it makes cleanup that much better and it keeps the inside looking good. I'm going to be doing vertical down and vertical up. Uh, vertical down with hard wire isn't necessarily a big deal because you don't have to worry about slag entrapment like you would using a self shielded or flex hole wire. So uh, I'm going to be doing both. I'm going to go vertical down and vertical up. I'm going to need a way so that this doesn't just fall down through. So I think what I'm going to do is just got some quarter inch dowel and I'll just cut it to the width of this and that'll just act as a stop so it'll hit that and it can't drop down any further. This is where I'm going to improvise guys. This piece right here is 45 inches from end to end. I don't want to go cutting a brand new piece up, which I have a bunch of it up there, when I've already got a bunch of scrap here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to piece this together and that is the great benefit of working with metal. Unlike wood, it's, you know, you can't just glue wood end for end and have it be strong. Unlike metal, you can. It's already got a 45 on each one of these ends, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to prep it, put a bevel all the way around so my weld has a place to go so I can grind it all flush. And then we'll use our fixture table to make sure this is nice and straight along the length of it.
pretty simple to get this nice and straight guys because I went out and built this fabrication table. So I'm going to take a couple shoulder bolts and stick them down through the table. Make sure our workpiece is against those shoulder bolts and then clamp it down. Take a couple more shoulder bolts on this side, drop them in the table, and do the same thing. Butt it right up. You see how that lines up perfect? Perfectly straight, perfectly lined up, perfectly flat. If you want to see how I built this fabrication table, I have links to that video up above. Go to paint, look like it was all one piece. So then we're gonna have some pieces that come out like this, and this is what the welder will sit on. Then this side will have like a little piece coming up to keep the welder from sliding off. So what I've done is, is I went around and measured pretty much all my machines and figured out what was the possibly widest machine I had that I might wanna put on this. And the widest one I had was nine, nine inches wide. This one's like seven and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it, each of these pieces, 10 inches long, and then we're gonna have a piece that comes up. So it'll be 10 inches inside of here to the inside of this piece that comes up. I'm gonna make four of them, one here, here, and then another row here and here. And so the machine doesn't like fall off the edge, I'm going to put a little inch and a half tall uh, lip. And just like the rest of the stuff, I'm going to go around and I'm going to chamfer all the edges, clean any, up any burrs, any rough edges, bevel out where these are going to weld together. So this is going to go together just like that, make a complete 90 degree. That's going to look nice and finished. Okay, so let me show you how simple it is when you have a fixture table to make things perfectly 90 degrees and make repetitive cuts. So this is just a piece of scrap metal right here, and I've got two shoulder bolts. These are just dropped down into the table. I'm going to bump that right there, and I'm going to use a clamp and clamp this down. Take one of these pieces right here. I've got two more shoulder bolts. Right here, this is the piece we need to weld. Bump it down to the shoulder bolts. Bump this over to our stop right here. Take this, stick it right there. That, that. Perfectly 90 degree corner. Now I just gotta weld that up just like that and I know that that's perfectly 90. That's the advantages of having a fabrication table like this and it's repetitive every time. Then you move on to the next one. Bump it down to your shoulder bolts, weld that one. Now I built this fabrication table guys using a template so that it was almost foolproof. It would be very difficult to get wrong. Uh, it wasn't a whole lot of money. If you can find a piece of plate reasonably priced right now, it's pretty hard with the price of steel right now, but uh, if you search around there are some deals out there. This plate here is 3 8 and I used a standard 5 8 annular cutter to cut the holes in the table. Now I used a mag drill to do it, but you don't have to go out and buy a mag drill. You could always go out and rent one at your local rental place. It's probably, I don't know, anywhere between 40 and $60 a day uh, to rent, but it beats buying one if you're only gonna use it at a very limited time. But this fabrication table is incredible. It makes sure that your work's always 90 degrees to itself. You can lay things out on a 45. As you can see here, you can lay things out straight I built these clamps and I built many more. Check out that video and I'll show you guys how you can build your own fabrication table, but it's just a real handy piece of equipment to have in your workshop. I use it constantly. I use it pretty much every day. So I'm gonna show you another little secret too, guys. So now that this is all pushed into place, I'm just gonna tack this side. Then I can 180 it and get the other side because I'm using this as a straight edge also. You'll see, watch. Now I'll just 180 it, just like this. Again, bump it against my stops and look. Now I'll weld this side right out.
How fast was that, guys? Like, no fixturing, no extra clamping, in and done. Now all I gotta do is just grind them down. I want them to look flush, though. I could leave the welds if I wanted to. It wouldn't look bad, but I want it to kind of look like it's all one piece. So I'm gonna grind that down now real quick. Now that we've got all these built looking the way that we want, there's one more thing that I like to do uh, that just helps finish it off and makes it look a little bit better. And I like to cap the ends so that everything just looks all finished. Now there's a couple ways we could do it. Um, I've used plastic plugs in the past. Now if you had to do a pile of these, uh, maybe this would be a little more cost effective and still give you a finished look. These just push down inside that pipe like that. I don't want to push it in because sometimes they're a little hard to get out. And then that'll give you a finished look by doing that. So, But we're going to take and we're going to cap it with metal. Now you don't have to go out and buy additional material to make the caps out of this. You can actually uh, use a bandsaw and cut up the same tube that you made it out of. And I'm going to show you how we do that now. So those are just a couple options to cap off your tubes when you do it. However, these do look really nice. The drawback to these is if you have things uh, that are, you know, rubbing against it and they're coming in and out, potentially these caps can like fall off and then you're going to be missing one and then you'll have to put a new one in. So for that reason, I'm just going to cap it with metal. We'll weld it up, grind it all flush. And again, I'll have links to all this stuff down in the video description. These caps, uh, these tools, everything pretty much you see. And if you don't see it and you're wondering, just leave a comment and I will do my best to get you the information. The simplest way that I found, aside from actually having some plate that you can just cut to length, would be to just use, like I said, the same tube that you built everything out of. And what you're, all you're trying to do is you're just going to cut to the inside of this the entire length of the tube. It'll be more apparent once we get going here, and I'll show you. Now the cut is slightly wavy, but we can fill that in with weld. But you see how we just cut completely that side off? Now we'll do the same thing for the other side, right over here. Now we just got to cut these pieces to length. Now it can be difficult when you weld around magnets, so what we're going to do is we're just going to get a little tack on here on each side and then remove the magnet so we can fully weld it out. It does not like that at all. Another thing you see me doing guys is I trim off every time I start I trim off. You see how it forms a little ball on the end? Well just that little ball is just enough to leave it a little proud when the arc starts. So I get that out of there so I'm starting fresh with a nice piece of clipped wire that's actually 30 thousandths in diameter versus the ball on the end which is, you know, probably 40. You hear how bad that sputters when you're working around magnets, guys? It's because it just messes with the weld puddle. Now there's nothing that says I couldn't leave this like it is, but I'm going to choose to just grind it down like I said because I want kind of that clean, smooth flush look. Now these are all finished. Now the way I like to shape and finish my metal is I start out with a hard, you know, rock abrasive and I use that to delicately go in and create the shape. And then I go back in with a flap disc which that takes out a lot of the scratches created by this and then it helps soft soften the edges and kind of just smooth everything up. So that's how I go about uh, taking care of finishing my metal. Now what we got to do is figure out where we want these. So a good height to me looks to be about 16 inches. My goal is is to be able to, if necessary, put a machine right here at the very end. So technically I could fit three machines on this side of the table. So I'd have a machine underneath and then a machine sitting on top of this and then 
I'm going to go up another 16 inches and have another one just like this. So I could actually have three machines sitting on this side of the table. Then, as you can see, as I was explaining, because of the way I have this spaced out, it's not going to interfere with the doors of the machine. And I can put some hooks on this side for, you know, the MIG guns and accessories and whatnot. And I'm making this portable so that it doesn't have to be set up like this all the time. So if I want to put a motorcycle on here, it's literally just a matter of pulling out these poles and it's freed back up. And I went around my shop and measured all my machines, how tall they were. And they're all pretty much the same height, no matter who the manufacturer is. Uh, this one is 14 inches tall. So I'm going to make the bottom of my brackets at 16 inches just to give us uh, plenty of room so we don't have to worry about fighting things in and out. Again, how simple this fabrication table is and how well it works. I've got this bumped against the stops and put a couple shoulder bolts in here. You can see my mark right there. Bring this over bump it into those boom weld it right there i'll clamp this down with a clamp and then we can just weld it all up then i'll come up 16 inches from here and do another one right after that and because this table's laid out uh, four inches on center or divisions of uh, two and we need to be 16 inches up i can just put in two more shoulder bolts lay this on there just like that and we will be exactly 16 inches between the two Now that I can see what this looks like together guys, I'll probably trim a little bit off the top just because it doesn't need to be this long and it's going to make this bracket a lot lighter. It's pretty light right now. Oh yeah, check that out guys. So now you kind of get an idea of what we're doing. So now I can put one welder down here, which I generally won't keep one down there because I want the area clean up under the table. So if I've got material to cut or long pieces to work on, I can. But if I needed to put three machines here, I could. One there, one there, one there. And I'm not wheeling uh, machines around, which is cutting into my floor space. So I will probably put this machine uh, probably here. And I'll probably put that aluminum welder right here. And if I needed to put a third machine underneath it, I could. But I generally probably wouldn't. So check this out guys, I'm really liking this. And another added benefit I never even really thought of is that it puts the controls right up at eye level. Like I said, this doesn't have to be just for my needs. This could be something that you guys could easily do. You know, put a receptacle on the end of your bench and make something that just comes in and out real easily when you're not using it for something like this. But the one thing that I see that I need to do is put like a spreader between here because my concern is if I get pulling on this cable or the cord, it could pull it, you know, maybe past this, I don't know, or it could drag the welder off. I just, I want to make it a little more secure, so I'm probably going to put something in it like this, just a piece of scrap metal to spread it. I'll do it there, and I'll do it there. Yeah, the concept is there. That's what I wanted. That's how it works, and uh, yeah, and you can see how I can get to the reel super easy and it's going to get good airflow all around it that's another super added benefit that it's got air all the way around the whole unit including underneath it so to make sure that i'm doing the right thing and grinding the right area because i'm gonna have to grind out just this weld on the inside to get that square tube in i'm actually going to take and color the weld with some black magic marker and that'll help me identify the specific weld that I need to grind because I wouldn't want to grind accidentally this side when it's taken down and then grind this weld because then I'd have to come back and grind that one anyways. So again guys I'm using my shoulder bolts to help place everything where I want it to be 
And that's going to make sure that everything is plumb level and square. So now I'm going to try to bend this 3 8 dowel. And I'm going to do this by trying to clamp it around a piece of pipe and then bending it around it. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I think it will, but I will soon find out. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work just fine. And I'll weld that on the back side of that. I'm going to just build three more of these. Keep these consistent. I've just got a little one inch square tube at the back. And it looks like it's to the edge of that hole. So just to keep everything consistent, that's where I will cut this. I'll mark it and cut it right at the edge of that hole. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going to make a mark right at the edge of the hole and another mark at the edge of the hole. And that's that. All right, guys. my grandson insists on being in this video. Anyways, so here it is, guys. Here is the finished product, and I could not be any happier with it. Uh, like I said, this could be used uh, for your sh fabrication shop. A couple small receivers down here. You can see I've got these all painted up, and this literally just pops right out. I like that it keeps everything up off my welding and fabrication table. You know, you could hang your stinger leads or your, you know, your welding cables up here, however you wanted to do it. You know, you could even get creative and put this welder on this side, you know, another set coming out. And you could have a plasma cutter, you could have a stick welder, you could have a TIG welder, however you wanted. There's the ability to have at least three here and another three over here. I love that this is a very small footprint and you get a lot of machines in that same amount of space. And like I said, they're right here, right where I need them all the time because this is mostly where I'm working. And you can see I've actually hung the uh, grounds over here. This is just how I did it. I wound the stingers around this. As time goes on, I'm sure maybe things will change a little bit more. And this is a great beginner welding project to stack up all your equipment and have it neatly organized right in your workspace without taking up any floor space whatsoever from carts like this. And that's all there is to it guys. I want to thank you for watching and if this is something that you like, please don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. And again, if you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using, you can check it out down in the video description. I'll have links down below. New videos every Friday, so please like, comment, subscribe. Until next week guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, see ya.